Find the money, find the scammer. This is a huge web. A huge web is what they've got here. Well, all my money has gone to him. Is this a $247,000 transfer? They sent me a check. $28,000 check, a $18,000 check, $10,000 right here. They did receive $36,000. Why? An insane amount of money. What did you do with this money? And I transferred it. Get me even with this scammer. We connect you to the next available representative. This is Kevin, how can I help you? We hunt down scammers. We try to get to the bottom of it. Something's going on. People were at my place. Evan? With cameras and everything else. This is such a unique situation because here today, we're gonna give Ken back what he sent. Big numbers. I hear the voices. I hope you're sitting down because this is probably gonna shock you. <laughs> In this video, we spent the last eight months of our lives tracking down a notorious scammer. As we say, find the money, find the scammer. And in this case, this scammer has already duped a previous guest on our show out of over $350,000. As we've hunted the scammer and tried to find their location, their elusiveness has motivated us to work even harder, bring in more people than we've ever done in any single video. We brought in other resources like White Hack Hackers, Trilogy Media, and we even flipped money mules to infiltrate his scam web. And the easiest one to get to was a guy named Evan that was in Sacramento, California. You know, basically a one hour flight from us and he accepted $36,000. And so we went on a mission to figure out exactly what this guy did with the money and where it went so we could find the scammer. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. So we wake up early on our way to Sacramento and we don't know what to expect. Art and I have done this before, the team and I have done this before, and you know we know one thing, that we have two days to figure out exactly who Evan is and to figure out where this money went. We want to know why the 65 years old person been receiving money from Allen and what exactly did he do with this yeah. money? The street that we got for the wire transfer, right. when we looked at it, there was no known house or, or business or anything on that address. So we actually went and looked down the street and we found the same guy, same name, like a, two blocks over. In a different address. A different address. Everything matches 100%. And when we looked up that guy's information, it matched the guy's information of the money transfer. It will be interesting to know if he even know existence about Alan. Exactly. We have two addresses. Okay. We have the business addresses. So he owns like a home inspection company and a few other businesses in this like little house. And then we have a home address. We can come back, knock on his door and go to his business. Let's fucking right. do it. Let's go. So many questions. I hope we're going to get the answers. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. We are crossing our fingers, hoping that either this Sunday or this Monday, Evan's at home so that we can talk to him. We wanted to get those answers from this trip. Why can he been taking 36 grand from a stranger in Kansas City? All right, let's go sniff around. <laughs> Okay, what That's do we it. have? That's it. It's Yeah. And this is it, boys. That white truck I've seen in one of the pictures. Before we go out anywhere, we always do a ton of research. So we have a bunch of ammo going there, right? So we want to know who are the neighbors, if, if they're neighbors. We want to know any vehicles, any identifying piece of information. So on one of the rentals, there was this flatbed truck parked in the driveway, and there was a, an Instagram handle on the back of the truck that matched the research that I've done. So we knew we were onto something. We're starting to put the pieces of puzzle together, and we know we're really, really close to uncovering what's going on with this money. Actually. Let's knock on one. Yeah, neighbors. Yeah, and see if they know Evan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Through our research, we actually found some social media that was tied to what we had thought was Evan's son, and so we had a handful of pictures there. And so we we're actually hoping that we could find Evan's actual home address through all the research that we had done. And make sure we have the right address. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Everybody has a ring camera.
don't want to bug you, but um, we're looking for Evan. Is he the neighbor next door? I no, don't. He doesn't live he doesn't in any of these streets. Oh, none of these. So there is in the. There is no guy Evan. There's a son. Oh, the son of Evan. Evan. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know when where he can be on Sunday at no. two o'clock? No. What do you need him for? We're actually looking for his father because um, we're trying to reach out to him and help him out. We think he's in trouble, so uh, his father. And when we did our research, the address came directly to these. Because they own all They own, them. oh, they own all uh, Okay, the property, they manage the property. So that's what I'm we- are trying to sell this place. I don't know if that was it. But son lives there, right? So that's the son of- Yeah. Okay. His business office is- Is it seven? Uh, no, that's his office. Is he there? He probably won't be there, there, there today. We can go by there and they have, they might have the time somewhere there. But if he's involved something shady, we don't know if it's he if he's the one that's involved in something shady. But he's he's involved, and we're trying to help him out. We're trying to yeah. reach out to him to help him out. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's the one that we knock. Oh, oh no, we're actually looking um, for Evan. For uh, Evan, we independent journalist. We flew from Los Angeles, California. From what thing? Who are you looking for? Evan. Evan. Okay, what about it? So we think that Evan is in trouble. He lives in on. Um, he's, he's in trouble. My landlord, mm -hmm. but he lives there and everything goes. Everything there. goes there. That's where I pay my rent. Oh, okay. That is house. Okay. You the best. Thank Next you so much. Have a great Sunday. Yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. We're going to baby. Let's go, baby. We started pissing a few people off, but. You have to understand, there's a lot of money that's been lost. I mean, we know that there's $600,000 that's lost. We don't know if Evan's part of this. We don't know if Evan is a victim himself. And we only have this time period to uncover what's going on. And also, she said that he's trying to sell his, all his properties, right? Maybe he's in trouble, like... Yeah, maybe he was like, let me sell everything and run for the hills. I guess we're gonna find out right now. Dude, that's our house. Seven, two. Yeah, right here. Evan. All right. He said he lives on the property, so I don't... The one, the, the, the house that is uh, staring at me. And when we go to the business, nobody's there. You can ask the neighbors. There is more houses over there. And the next door neighbor is, has their door open. And, you know, we decided to just go knock on the door thinking, if this is Evan, or if it's somebody that knows Evan, we'll at least find out some information. We go in and we walk into the middle of what is an open house to sell that house. Perfect. We actually sorry for crushing your party. We're looking for a person, Evan, next door. I don't know that I've met him personally and he hasn't stopped by to check out the open house. Hey, sorry for bother, okay? And good luck on selling houses. So Beautiful house. Yeah. <laughs> We're not here to buy anything. We're looking for Evan. So it looks like office is on the front and his home is on the back. Business up front, party in the back. Wow, so many cameras. Evan? Hello? Fifty six. So we head back to the hotel and you know we feel excited about what we found, but the clock's ticking. So we get back to the hotel, we have dinner, and we regroup on a game plan for the next day. They said, when we talk today, he usually from nine to one, he's already at that business. The son I think the, the son, oh, yeah, the, the son. son. Too. Yeah. I think we should go straight to that taxes, purposes, whatever, that shit that works yeah, yeah. only four hours per day and just go and like, hey, we need to talk uh, to son and put fucking um, Sean on a it's, FaceTime. It's interesting that he's trying to sell all the properties now, yeah. right? Yeah. Like either he needs money or he's leaving or... Evan's son running the whole business and he used somehow his father to receive that money and laundering and just 
all the family members, like if you look up the corporation, like there's like a, I think a brother, um, Evan's on there. So it's definitely like a family run business. Yeah. So I yeah. think we're gonna walk in there tomorrow and there's gonna be the like, whole family. Yeah. We have less than 24 hours at this point to figure out who Evan is. And I know I keep saying this, but the entire purpose of this trip and why we all went there was to find out who is Evan and what is he doing with his money. So we decided to get on the phone with Sean, which is Alan's son, who had originally contacted us for help. Hello? Sean? Yeah. Hey, this is David McClellan with Social Catfish. How are you? I'm good. How are you, man? Good, good. We're confronting the money mule in the next 30 minutes. Really? Yeah. Do we know if he's a willing mule? We don't know we yet. We didn't know yet. We have all the deposits. So April 13, 2023, May 17, 2023, and then June 5th, 2023, Evan got money. We know for sure he did. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I will help in any way I can, guys. Beautiful. We're gonna call you in 25 minutes. All right. All right. Good. Stand by. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Sean. Nice. Talk to you soon. Bye. I'm back. My my conspiracy is like sounding well, but you the fucking never know. Maybe dad is breaking breaking bad. Yeah. Maybe he's the one the fucking moving money, shady businesses, opening taxes, and you know like. Huh? Let's go through the back door. You can see the lights are on inside. <clears throat> it says open, but it's not open. The door is closed. All right, we'll head back. We'll knock on the back door. So we go back to the business and Evan's not there. So we come up with a backup plan just in case we can't get a hold of Evan because we had noticed that there were uh, security cameras on the business address, on the home address, and on the rental addresses, and they were the exact same security cameras. I hope they show this, this, this footage. We decide to go around the back, and we end up meeting Evan's neighbor. Maybe we can ask him. Mm -hmm. Hey boys, quick question. We, um, we're looking for Evan. He lives over here, 714, and there is tax business. Do you know if they open because for some reason the main door is closed? Um, you know what? I haven't seen his truck lately, so I don't know if he's been open lately. Um, because he usually, Evan usually parks back here. Yeah, so. Because we came yesterday, nobody was home. We came today. I haven't seen him lately. Honestly, yeah, he usually, during the week, Monday through Friday, he's usually parked back here. I haven't seen him. Uh, what about his son? When we met Evan's neighbor, he was really nice at first, and he was saying, oh, you know, I haven't seen Evan. And then when we said that we thought Evan was in a scam, he might be in trouble, he totally shifted his story. He didn't really want to talk to us anymore. We going um, after a Roman scam and Evan involved, so he's in trouble. Oh, I haven't seen him for a long time. Like, it's actually been pretty quiet over there. Yeah. None of them, no, no son, no, nothing. No, not really. We, we will leave a note. Okay. We'll leave a note. Okay. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. Cool. Yeah. We drive off thinking that this guy is trying to cover for him. He haven't seen anybody for a while. He seemed like he was high, like not yeah. telling us. Uh -huh. And he's like, it's been pretty quiet over there lately. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Or somebody got instructions like, hey, if somebody will show up that you don't know without any appointments, do not open the door. Yesterday it says close, but somebody opened today. It says open today. Welcome to service. Due to your office hours, press zero. To speak to an agent, press one. It says open, but it's closed. Thank you for calling service. We're not available at this time. Please leave a name and number and we'll get back to you. Hey, that sounds yeah. like... If you have all these businesses, why do you need a roommate? It's, it's one of those investigations that you have more uh, questions than answers. He has to be spooked. Like, yeah. He has, he to, has be to be spooked. Oh, yeah. If somebody will come to me and like, hey, there is something going on, we want to talk to you, like, I would, okay, tell me. I would listen and I will tell you if I'm, if I'm part of it or not. But if you accepted $36,000 and you don't feel good about it, are you going to do it now? No, I don't exactly. Know I so he like knows, he knows something. Yeah. They did receive fucking $36,000.
Why? It's not a small amount of money. Now, what did you do with this money? Yeah? Oh, it's me again. Uh, good morning. We have a question. We went to see uh, Evan's business. Okay. Like I said, Evan is in trouble and we're trying to actually help him. But the business is closed and we cannot find son, Chris. I know nothing else. That's all I know is he's my landlord. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know nothing else. And I think um, they live next door, but okay. I don't know. So he does live here. Yeah, I seen dog from yesterday. Let's go back to the business. This is this is weird. It just doesn't make sense. Like they're hiding from us. One really interesting thing, when we went to Evan's business, we had noticed one thing that we didn't see the day before. We see a car parked in the driveway. The blinds were open slightly and there was a light on inside. So we knew somebody was either there or somebody had just been there. Oh, there's a vehicle. Oh, there is a fucking car. It's a nice jacket, by the way. I was looking at it. It's uh, from streaming. streaming. Yeah, they, they send it to us. Hey, I'm oh, looking for morning. Evan. Evan's not here today. His son, he's not here either or no? No, I'm Kent. I'm oh. his brother. We walk in and we're expecting to see Evan and come to find out it's Evan's brother, right? They're close in age. They look similar to the pictures that we saw online. And Evan's brother was super nice, this really nice guy. So we came across of a case in Kansas City that is a guy who got scammed out of $800,000. So that person had five cash mules and one of the cash mule, not cash mule, he received, he sent $36,000 to Evan. So here's the, the transfers. So right here and right here. So we're trying to figure out why Evan, what is his involvement, why he received from this man, from a victim from Kansas City, received $36,000. What we find out is that Evan's brother knows what's been going on with Evan. I know he was dealing with a girl that was in Israel. That he was dating online during yeah. that time? Ooh. But that's all. I don't, I, I don't know how much he was, you know. And Evan was part of a romance scam himself. He had been receiving money. And the craziest part about this, he was still talking to the person that day. It sounds you. just like the gal that he was dating. Either diamonds or gold. Yeah, she same thing. Oh here. my God. Do you have his number? We, we've been trying to get a hold of him for two days. He will be here tomorrow. We just want to hear his story. Call me your number and I'll have him call you. Okay. Okay. We're, we're trying to help. So, yes. Yeah. No, I. So we go after bad guys and we're trying to find out. We investigate for months. Okay. And all of a sudden, money track goes directly to freaking Sacramento. So we have five cash mules that $800,000 being spread it out. And it's ended up at Evan's uh, bank account, $36,000. Okay. Well, supposedly what, what was happening is he was, he was getting the money and just transferring it back to them. Do you know how he was transferring the money or no? I don't. That's what we're trying to figure out. Because what happens is this money always moves somehow, right? Yeah. And these criminals, they hide behind people like Evan, but yeah. the money always ends up somewhere. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to trace where the money goes yeah. to try to see if there's any money well, left. She could never get out of Dubai. I'm looking at him like, there's yeah. something wrong, Evan. Yeah. If she can't get home, supposedly her dad was in this industry and she right. should know the rules to get out of there with this right, stuff. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. But did you say Dubai or Israel? I don't remember. Okay, because our victim from Kansas City was Dubai. 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 I will give Evan this information tomorrow. Okay. And he'll call you and... Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You Thank leave, you. Uh, can you give, right. um, I, I, give your email as well? Yeah. And she's stuck in Dubai for a month. They start sending fake bank accounts like, hey baby, I don't need your money, have 10 million dollars. Send me one million, I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna pay you back with 20%. Yeah. This is the girl that he was talking to. Do you, oh. know, do you know what the girl looked like that Evan oh. was talking to? No. no. The, they stole images online. So we found her and she has husband, she has kids. You be banning this woman? She has a different life. She has. She. She does not even know you. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate right. it. Now yeah, you, you flash yeah. a little bit more light on, on our story. I appreciate it. Okay. Please. Yeah. We will try to help. Okay. I will make sure he gives that. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah.
He seemed pretty genuine, but when we left there, we just didn't know that if he was gonna hand this stuff off to his brother or if his brother was hiding from us or not. But at least we knew that Evan was in a romance scam. The money that he got was most likely to be funneled somewhere else for the scammer, and we had to still follow the money. It was exactly the same. And he said, I told him, isn't it weird that, you know, she's been there for like a month or something, and you, he never met the girl, anything? It's exactly the same f***ing story. So he's a victim. Yeah. Oh. Let's call, let's call Sean and give him an update. Hello. Sean. Sorry. Yeah. So we didn't talk to Evan, the guy that your dad he's wired the town. funds. He's, he's out of town till tomorrow. We talked to his brother though, and his brother knew, knows what's going on. And his brother said he was scammed the same way, and he was getting money and forwarding it to um, this person but it sounds like he got a lot more money than what your dad sent to him. So we left our information, and he, when he gets back in tomorrow, we're gonna have a chat with him. So we'll, get you up, we'll keep you updated. It's a girl in Israel, and she dealing with gold, diamonds, and she's stuck in Israel, and blah, 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 and she needs help. So it's exactly the same fucking story that your dad went through. There is another man in Sacramento who's 65, dating online, sending money across the world. I mean, he's a cash mule, but yeah. he's he's a victim. He's an unwilling cash mule. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Do, did his son say he's going out and buying Bitcoin, or how are they relating it back? I'm pretty confident he knew how the money was being transferred. He stopped himself and then and then said, "Okay, give me your information. I'll have my brother contact you." Yep, same old phone for it, huh? What is update with your dad? Do you know if if he still talks we're, to? No, we're in counseling now but you know it's still not i mean i i, I still am very angry about the whole thing um and he uh we're still going through all the legal proceedings mm -hmm. i mean we're trying to change the nature of his trust so it's uh, irrevocable so that he can't get scammed you know down Again. the road you know that's why we still have to get something in place that's going to protect his assets the amount of money that we're talking here is just absolutely insane we, we should have all the answers to um, where the money went and Hopefully even this week. yeah this week and then even next steps to um, once we find out where the money went glad you guys are doing counseling i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be a while but at least you guys are heading in the right direction stay strong don't give up and um and good luck with everything okay we'll be in touch all right guys thanks all thanks right. Bye. Have a good day all right good shit good job partner yeah so we left Folsom, we went back to Southern California with our fingers crossed, hoping that Evan would reach out to us. Yeah, you're right. I don't let you drive my car. So it's the next morning, <laughs> I get to the office, it's a busy day, and Brianne and I decide to sneak away for you know 30 minutes to go grab lunch together. My phone rings and it's an area code from Hello? Northern California. And I know, before I answer, I know it's Evan. Evan. Yeah, we, we were trying to get a hold of you for sure. Hello, my name is Evan. I am 65. Apparently, um, David uh, came up here and was looking for me. And he first went to my one of my duplexes. I wasn't in town. This is Evan, something's going on. People were uh, at my place looking for you with cameras and everything else, we're looking for you. Evan explained to us that he was talking to somebody online. He remembered receiving funds at Allen and he was actually depositing it into Bitcoin ATM machines or sending the money to other people. Allen has been sending money to me, but I didn't know what's going on, you know? I just fell in love, that was the thing. Her name is Sharon Faith Larry told me that she was going, you know, going over to Egypt to buy gold. And, and so I thought it was kind of cool, you know. And then when she gets over there, I went to go leave the airport and I can't because I got to pay all kinds of customs. And I didn't have enough money. So I sent her some money and first amount was like $10,000 just to help her get out. And great, now I can get, you know, get on the airplane. And she gets to the airport, she sent me a, a itinerary, but she has all kinds of excuses. This is why I couldn't leave. So I had to cancel my name on it because I had to pay extra customs and duties at the at the airport. I guess I was just so enamored that I was blinded to be you know better terms for it and what was going on. 
you know, I sent David some of the pictures that she sent that I know are wrong, but that have been manipulated, you know, because part of her arm's missing on one picture. And you can see a gray outline around her body that pasted on top of a the background, you know, with the background of Egypt. Once we were able to connect with Evan, he sent over a bunch of information. He had a ton of images for this woman he had been talking to. So when our research team performed reverse image searches, we were able to find that the majority of the images were stolen directly from her Instagram account. And what we also found out was the real woman, her, her real name is Joy. She's actually a life coach. And something to remember is that in all of these cases, the photo victim has nothing to do with the romance scam at all. They actually have no awareness that someone's been stealing their images and using them for romance scams. See, what I was doing, I was taking the money that they were sent to my account or my banks. You know, they wanted me to open a, an account at Wells Fargo and also B of A. They were sending money to those banks. I saw where Alan, give, you know, sent money to me, but there was no address or anything like that. So I could apologize to him and you know, I didn't know what was going on. And after talking to him for a few days and him realizing what had happened, he actually became a little angry and he comes to me and he says, look, David, I want to help you catch this person. And I want to do everything I can to stop this person that stole money from me and money from other people. After David contacted me, I started feeling guilty and I pulled up and went through some of the, the, the bank statements and pulled off addresses that I was able to get because they sent me checks. I got their addresses off, you know, off the checks and I sent them letters saying, hey, this Sharon is uh, scamming us. She told me that you were a, a client that was buying, you know, certain stuff and she was buying stuff for you to, to send back to you. If this is true, then it's fine. If not, it's a scam. I didn't hear back from any of them except for one. And that's a guy that just lives probably not more than five miles from my office. When I started telling him, I was like, Ken, she's been stringing us. And I told him, you keep your money. We don't, you know, we're getting even with this scammer. And so we went on this adventure with Evan to try to find exactly who the scammer was, to bust them and stop everyone that was sending money to them from sending money. It is not right to, to prey on people's emotions and affections. And just today, you know, she asked me, when am I gonna send the other 5,000? Well, I'm gonna try to do it today. If not, it'll be tomorrow, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Evan was also sending money to other people. And there was this one guy that he'd sent the most amount of money to. His name was Douglas. And this guy was a man that used to live in Utah and just moved to Texas, to Houston, Texas. And we decided that was the next step for us. So as we're coming up with a game plan with how to get a hold of Douglas, the scammer asked Evan to send $5,000 to Douglas. So we knew it was a perfect opportunity. We would stage us sending money. And instead of sending money to Douglas, we're gonna send him a letter, basically saying, you're in trouble. I'm gonna head to the bank right now. I'm gonna take out $5,000 in cash. I'll come back to the office, record myself wrapping up the money, packaging it, writing the Money Mule's information on it. We'll send a real package to the Money Mule with a letter that says, I've been scammed and I think you are too. I'm worried that you're in trouble. Please give him a call ASAP. So the idea behind this is to make the scammer think that we're sending money. We film it, we package it, we give it to Evan to give to the scammer, basically saying, hey, look, I packaged this money. I put it in the mail. Here's the USPS tracking code. And instead of putting the cash in this envelope, we put a single letter that says, Douglas, you're in trouble. And so it's Saturday morning, Brianna and I are about to leave the house to go get coffee, and I get a call from Douglas. Douglas? Yes. You, so you were supposed to receive $5,000, right? Right. Yeah, and you were supposed to get it in the mail? Yeah. I actually sent you the letter because you're being scammed. And the person who sent you money, Douglas, is Evan, um, and he lives in uh, Folsom, California. I hope you're sitting down because this is probably gonna shock you. Oh, I'm sitting down. My company, socialcatfish.com, we help out people that are involved in romance scams. You know, you've been talking to somebody online, they've fallen in love with you, now they're asking you for money. Um, Douglas, these funds are being funneled from this guy, Alan, to, the, to Evan, and now to you. And I mean, this is a big scam that, you know, we've been able to trace close to half a million dollars that's been lost to, to these people. 
See, the, the thing is, I'm not being asked for any money. Right, they're sending you money and then they're asking you to forward money to them. And so that's why we sent you this letter to try to intercept this and try to get in touch with you to, because what we're trying to do is actually find out who this scammer is and where they're from. They're, they're in Egypt right now. Would you be able to send me pictures of the person? So I want to show you, I'm going to prove to you that this is a scam. Can I send them to this number I dialed, I called? Yeah, you can send us this number. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've seen some pictures. That's the same person that Evan is talking to that he's in love with. So, but she goes, this person goes by a different name, just so you know. Oh, is that right? That's right, to Evan. Would you mind if I got Evan on a call with us? That would be fine. Okay, let me get to do a three-way call with, with Evan. Hold on. What's going on? This is a man that's receiving money from somebody else that thinks he's in a relationship just like Evan. Uh, Evan, are you there? Um, I have Douglas on the line. Douglas, I have Evan. Okay. Yeah, she told me you were the brother of her translator over there. What did she tell you? Who I was? She told me that you was a client. <laughs> I'm a client, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, she is scanning us. What we're trying to do right now is we want to see if we can catch the scammer. And Douglas, I want to see if, if you are willing to help us out. Yeah. Okay. What she's trying to do now is trying to do a transfer. Just tell the, this person that the post office intercepted the package and that they deposited the money to an account that you have to claim because you're not allowed to send money through the mail. You called, you gave them your information, and you're just waiting for them to send you um, an email so that you can um, have the funds deposited into your account. I have a website, Douglas, that we're going to try to get them to go to and log into, and we're going to try to track their location using this website. All right, that sounds good. Okay, and do not let them know that that um, that you know it's a scam, and just try to buy some time. But I'll send you a text with the follow up right now. Um, I think we can do this. So I think we can get this going, but I, I need both of your help. So we're working with Evan and Douglas at this point, and the scammer still has no clue but we want this guy bad. So we have a game plan with my fake banking website. We are either gonna try to get the scammer to authenticate his account by downloading the software through the website, so we create a pop-up that pops up in the scammer's account, or we're gonna use our customer support channel to get the scammer to do it. We also reached out to a few hackers, so people that you know, like Jim Browning, Zero Day, Chappie, and we had a meeting with them and said, hey look, this hole has stolen over $1.3 million, what we had calculated at that point. And so what I do is I Photoshop this receipt from this Bitcoin ATM machine. I take an old picture that Douglas had taken, I Photoshop over that, and then I send that to Douglas. Douglas gives that to the scammer. And what was in the Photoshop was a fake QR code that would lead the scammer to download this software onto their phone and it had shown that the number was one digit off. And so what we wanna do is convince the scammer that had gone to the wrong wallet and the scammer had to contact customer service in order to do that and they had to scan this barcode to verify their information. So we tried doing that and the scammer wasn't trusting at all. In fact, he wouldn't click on the link, he wouldn't scan the QR code and he ended up calling the customer service for the crypto ATM machine instead and told Douglas to reach out. At that point, we just said, look, we made a mistake. We transferred money into the wrong wallet and the money's gone. And we worked on plan B. So plan B was to use a site that we had built that was a fake banking website. And so this website, it works and acts and feels like a real website. You log in, you can create an account, you can set up money transfers, there's customer service, there's a customer service number. It works like a real business. And so the next plan of attack was, look, we're gonna create a pop-up in the site to verify the information, and that was gonna download the software. Because the scammer at this point had never clicked on the link, 
we knew that they didn't know what this was. We create this fake wire transfer from Evan to Douglas that has the name of our fake banking website on it. And the goal with that is to have Douglas give the scammer the login for this website because the scammer had already asked for it. And to our surprise, the scammer creates an account on our bank website. So once Evan gets the money, he starts telling the scammer he's having issues with his bank. And to our surprise, the scammer tells Evan to use our bank website that Douglas had set up. And he ends up calling customer support and guess who answers the phone? Please wait while we connect you to the next available representative. This is Kevin, how can I help you? Oh, so that means I need to download the app, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, 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 so yeah, so all you do, so basically all you do is you, once you create a com account, um, you verify information. Yeah. So it's, it's really easy, you just, upload an image and, and a, or sorry, a driver's license and you put your address in. Once that, that gets approved, um, what happens from there is um, you should get an email just saying, hey, look, you've been verified. Uh, from there, um, there'll be some download links. And so you can either um, verify an Android device or a laptop computer. And then, um, so, so once you uh, connect to though, you have to use your verified device. That's how we keep your account secure so that nobody like, can get access to your account. Okay, so so if you don't so basically, if I don't download the secured um, the secured to my app the secured thing to my app, I wouldn't be able to send people to anybody, right? Yeah, you can't. So that way, like nobody can log into your account and they can't like send like take your money out or send money because we have we have users that deposit lots of you know hundreds of thousands of dollars, twenty five thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, and because of that, like we have to make sure the accounts are secure, if that makes sense. Oh, oh, okay, I understand. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Thank you. Did all you right, need? All right, Kevin. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Do Did, Did you need help setting up the account or? Oh, no, no, no. I'll just do that. I'll just do that on my computer now. But if I need any help, I'll just put a call to Yeah, yeah. You can either call us back or, or send us an email. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, no problem. Have a good one. <laughs> After I get off the phone with the scammer, I check my fake banking website, and sure enough, this scammer's created not one, but two accounts. And sure enough, the IP is linked back to Nigeria. So now we have an IP address linked back to Nigeria. We have the scammer's voice, and we know they have kids because there, was, there were kids in the background. And we have all the digital wallets, the crypto wallets, that we can do a KYC request with. We try to get the scammer to verify their phone and the scammer starts to catch on. He tells Evan that it was a scam, it's a Chinese scam website and not to use it, that he made a mistake. Evan tells him the money's lost and he can't get it to him and the scammer messages support and basically says, you're a scam, I'm gonna report you. And I respond back saying, tell me how because you're the one that submitted a fake ID as a verification and logging in from a Nigerian IP because we found out who you are. See, I have the money now and I'm supposed to be giving her the information, my bank information so that she can have funds transferred to me. I find out that Douglas had gotten a wire transfer for $10,000 from somebody from Boston and a $3,500 uh, check from Ken who had showed up at Evan's doorstep. So I reach out to Douglas and have a conversation with him and say, hey, look, this is not your money. I get you've lost money, but let us give the money back to these people and make sure that they're not gonna be scammed anymore. So I'm out all of the money that I'm out. Correct. And, um, we're trying to get the money back to the other people, but uh, I may or may not see anything. If you're just discovering our content, or maybe you're a frequent viewer, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So we fly to Texas. I still don't know if Douglas is 100% that he's gonna give us the money. So I just talked to him before and he had questioned me about actually trying to keep the money. So we get to Texas. Panera, bo <laughs> Panera box. 
Love you guys, amazing crew. And we finally meet Douglas in person. I just wanna make sure, I don't care. Yeah, um, let's go down and get that uh, money. You all come by this or? Y'all come and go by this. So we meet Douglas in the hotel room and he doesn't have the money on him. And so he's like, oh, I left it in my car. We go down to the lobby, get this money out of the car. He forgot his um, couple I, things. I forgot okay. some envelopes that okay. we needed to grab out of there. Okay, okay. But, uh, <laughs> Important envelopes. We want us to bring that car. Uh, no, it, uh, tell me where it's at. And I it's can in the just garage. Move. Yeah, because oh. it's like, it's downtown, there is no parking. Oh, okay. So they must bring the car. Yeah, with my, with my we have like a few envelopes right. over there. We just yeah. need to grab yeah. it. Okay, okay, let me let me. Go. I, uh, go I was hoping that it wasn't gone yet because I forgot to grab We can ask them. Can, yeah. can you guys grab yeah, that? Yeah, we can, we, we, we we can, can grab, grab it because it's going to be easier for them. And we just reassure him that he's doing the right thing. You know, this was a man that was talking to somebody in line who lost $36,000 himself. And he wanted to keep this money because he, I mean, he had a beat up car. He didn't have a lot of money. Um, but. We have reassured him that he's doing the right thing, and in the end, he, he agreed with us. I've been in the military. I, have, I was a scout leader for 30, 40, 50 years almost. Sheriff's Department, search and rescue. I was an EMT. I'll tell you the story. She was in Houston. She's a gemologist is what she calls herself, and she sells gems and minerals. Went to Egypt and uh, purchased some gold bricks and some opals. She showed me a picture of gold bricks. Because she spent so much on the stuff, because it was more than what she anticipated, they wouldn't allow her out of the country unless she paid the tariffs. With this and, Allen person we talked yeah. to, that's the same story that he had. Basically, they've been conversations about her getting her purchases out of Malaysia. And I've got a list of the items that she's bought, and, you know, totals basically $4 million. And how long have you been talking to? A year, almost a year. I was talking to her this morning. I'm supposed to transfer 3,500 and today. I've helped her uh, with the anticipation that uh, she was gonna pay me back. He lost $15,000. At least. And bank accounts and... I'm on a fixed income. And um, so everything, I had to go out of my way to get stuff, yeah. you know? My truck is ready to be foreclosed on. They're ready to repossess it because I haven't been able to make payments. The payments are like five or six hundred dollars. After I went and got all of these payday loans and everything else, I got to where I wasn't able to pay all of the bills and be able to do anything. And then, so Evan's like, hey, look, I have these different people I'm actually sending money to. You know, one's Ken, I think he's close to me. But literally, the week that I started talking to Douglas, he got two deposits, one for $10,000. And one for $3,500. Mm -hmm. Now he knows that he was being scammed, yeah. right? And so we want people to know, like, I mean, he was a victim. Like, he, he wasn't trying to help out. Like, I mean, you were a victim right. in this and you were trying to just help this person out or what you thought was helping yeah. this person out. Douglas has $13,500 cash that he's brought to us. I mean, he's unfortunately in a tough spot, you know, trying to get back on his feet, but he's, you know, kept this money for the last three weeks so that he can I've, give it. I've had it at least, at least three weeks. Yeah. And so what we're going to do with the money, we're going to go and actually physically hand this money back and we'll send you a video of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you can feel good about this and be like, okay, look, I was scammed, but at least I'm, I'm kind of making do, right doing the right, right thing. Right. Yeah. This is the right thing to do. And that's, and Douglas is because of your heart is so big and so pure. Not a lot of people will do that. You can tell that you're a good person and even you financially struggling, you know that this money belongs to another victim and you have guts to return that money. I'll be honest, like if I was in Douglas' situation, being behind my car, being in debt, 
it, being we, late on bills. Yeah, like, you know, there's there's the right thing to do and he's doing the right thing here. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. These people are gonna appreciate it. And and the, the person we give the money back to, they're gonna they're gonna know that and we're gonna tell them that. And yeah. That it came from you, 100%. So let's, let's count the money, let's just verify everything. And then we'll change it into like a cashier's check. So we're just not walking yep. out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. $13,500 yeah. on us. I have a question for you, Douglas. Is there any way that we could get that phone or buy that phone off you? Sure. Okay. It's an iPhone 13. Okay, I'll get you an iPhone 15. And at that point, I knew I had to keep this phone because there's too much information on this phone. And if we were gonna get this to law enforcement, and if we were actually able to track down the scammer and try to get access to the scammer, I needed this information off the phone. Yeah, you wanna start counting um, this. Those should be in uh, groups of 10. So it should be a thousand. I mean, I'm looking and it's realistically one full year of her like bossing you around. Like, yeah, go more here, or less. do this, take this money out, more or less. create this account. More or less, yeah. You know, I'll, be, I'll really feel relieved when all of this is over. You know, like I said, I could, I could keep all of that money and I would almost be even with what I've lost. I feel better doing things the legal way. Yeah, the right way. You know? Well, that's why it's a huge honor and it's huge respect to you doing that. So we're in the hotel room. Ashton is counting the money after Douglas counted the money just to make sure we had everything there. And then we're trying to figure out who's gonna carry this money around until we get it back to these victims because it's cash. I start going through the phone and these messages and I get to a transaction and it's one of the first transactions Douglas sent. Is this a $247,000 transfer? Yeah. You oh. sent $247,000 transfer to them? They sent me a check. For a quarter of a million? Yeah, and I transferred it. We've done a lot of these cases, but this scammer was so ballsy, I was blown away. Because Eugene sent you a lot, of, we're gonna go see him. Yeah, Eugene has like a lot, like big numbers. Um. Holy. A, we're in Massachusetts, we're gonna go. The oh, yeah, that's the one that we need to return back money. But there was a $28,000 check, a $18,000 check, $10,000 right here. Like, Eugene has lost an insane amount of money. And that's a quarter million dollar. Are they coming after you for taxes? Has the IRS come, come to no, you? No, not yet. Not that I know. So, Dude. there's things that we can help you out with and things we can't. But you accepting this amount of money might raise some red flags with the IRS. Yeah, and, and I'm glad I'm doing this. Okay, let's see if I can find the... What was the two, what did they say, the quarter million There's, dollars? There, there it is right there. <sighs> we gotta catch this guy. Um, wow. How did you transfer that away? That amount of money. Like a How wire? Did is it a wire? What is it? I, you certainly can't do that on an app. Like cash I app. probably, I don't know, but... I, that was one of the first ones. Oh my God. I start going through the phone and these messages and start looking at all these wire transfers, all these cryptocurrency transfers. And this is a 50,000 one right before that? Uh, probably. So Douglas is an amazing guy. You know, we sat down, you know, I freaking love Douglas. He's a, he's a handful, but he's a genuine person. He's a super nice person that's super caring. We found out that, you know, his whole life he had served others, you know, and, and he was really trying to help this person out that he was talking to that he thought was stuck, you know, overseas. Unfortunately, he's, you know, a gullible person. He even admits it, um, but I really like him and he has a really good heart. And, you know, it's amazing that he had this money and he was able to give it to us to give back to these people. Um, most people probably wouldn't do that. You know, it's like, you've heard of like Pandora's box, right? Yeah. It's like, we just keep opening up another Pandora's box, another Pandora's box, another Pandora's box. But we have to stop yep. this Eugene guy yep. because he's sending money right now. He just sent $10,000 like a week or two weeks ago. So. Operation Texas complete. We go back to California with $13,500 in cash and I go convert it into cashier's checks to give back to these victims. 
and we came up with the game plan. We're gonna notify all the victims. We're gonna stop all the money that's coming to the scammer and we're gonna still try to hack their phone on top of the, all the other stuff that we've done and get everything over to law enforcement to get this person arrested. Because we didn't have a lot of time and we we're traveling a lot, the team had to split up. So Art and Ashton, they go to Folsom, California to go give this money back and then meet with Evan. Brianne goes with Douglas and my brother's in Boston area and they go to find out who this Eugene guy is and give him this $10,000 check back. And I stay behind working to hack the scammer's phone with Zero Day Chappie and Jim Brownie. So travel day, the day that we left San Diego and flew into Boston. Just landed in Boston. We arrived about oh, 3, 4 p.m. and we were waiting for Douglas to, to meet us at the airport. Cameron. Hello, I'm Brianne. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Doug. It was great meeting him. We had about an hour and a half of travel from the airport to Eugene's house. On our way to visit Eugene and hopefully he will talk to us and we'll be able to give him his $10,000 check back. So does Eugene know that uh, that she's scamming him? We don't know that. We haven't spoken to Eugene. Oh. We're going to meet him together. Oh. Oh, it's right here. What's the number? It's, it's this one. I looked at it on Google. So the whole objective was to get there as early as possible so that we can connect with Eugene. We didn't want to get there too late. Um, but unfortunately, because his flight was delayed, we got there about after 9 p.m. You know, just as a precaution, um, I did have my brother-in-law meet me there as like a, a bodyguard just to make sure everything goes smooth. So when we arrived to the house, we noticed there were two doors. Okay. There might not be anybody home, but who knows? I hear voices. I hear somebody, it sounds like, or they have the TV on. We saw all the lights were on in the home. Nobody was answering the door. Because all the lights are on, the TV's on. Yeah. Let's try, let's see what we can do there. So we regrouped and decided, you know what, let's just try to hit this early in the morning. And so we had to come back. I think you should leave a uh, letter on the door. Mm -hmm. It's big, hey Eugene. Um, we stopped by. I don't know if you were sleeping. Uh, if you can call me back, uh, it's important, Brienne. Okay. We figured that we would leave a note on the door. All right, well, let's see if he calls us back. I mean, we'll just come back tomorrow anyway, but fingers crossed. I, I didn't receive a call from Eugene last night, so Maybe he hasn't left his house. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. When we got to the door, I noticed that my note and the brochure was still in the screen. So we knocked on the door and he answered the door. Hi. Hi, are you Eugene? What? Are you Eugene? Yes. Hi Eugene, my name's Brianne. Um, my, me and my husband, we own a YouTube channel by the name of Catfished. And we have people that come to us looking for help. They've been romance scammed online. They, they, They've been romance scammed online. Yeah. And we feel that may, you may be caught up in something I was. of some sort. Yeah. Um, you gotta let me put something else on. Okay, okay. For some reason I'm looking waist up and I'm seeing clothes. I'm seeing a shirt. And then after that, just, yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay, now I feel more comfortable. Okay, um, do you mind if we chat for a minute? Well, come on in. Uh, all right, thank you. Um, I received one of your checks. I'm Douglas Hickman. Oh, yes, you did. And, did. uh. Yeah. So, you want to sit down? Yeah, of course, of I course. Have difficulties on disabled veterans. Okay. Uh, so am I. Why we are here today is it looks like Douglas has been involved in a romance scam as well, and so he had been receiving funds, and some of those funds have been from you. Do you know who Douglas is? 
I don't. I've never met him. Are you? No. Uh, we've never. We've never met. But I have received. I've received at least one check from you. Yeah. For ten thousand dollars. I remember your name. For yeah. ten thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And today, we would like to. Are we, yeah, we yeah. would like to give you the we check like back. To, we would like to return the money to you. I, I also um, wanted to like get a little bit of a background, like who you were talking to online and see if we can connect these dots. Because just so you know, this is a huge scam and we've been following it since last year. We visited a man in Kansas City. And you said you have a, a check of mine? Yes. Uh, well, actually, I cashed the check gave them the cash and they have made a check out to you for the ten thousand dollars because uh, the person that I'm that I was involved with they would uh, this is unusual okay I'll tell you my story I lost my wife for 40 years last September oh I'm sorry <clears throat> and then within a month after she passed, I said to myself, I can't st sit here moping around. I got to find a woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I joined that match. And the next thing you know, I have a, someone who says they're a woman contacting me. It was a welcome thing. Mm -hmm. I fell right into it. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask you what, what the name that they use? Lisa was? Johnson. It claimed to be a rare stone collector. Her mother originated this uh, stone collection business and her mother passed away and so she took over it. And um, all she needed to do was uh, pay off this or pay off that and she'd wind up you know, being able to come here. The first guy that we spoke to, Alan, I think his the woman he spoke to is Lisa Johnson. You know, after talking to him for a little bit, it sounds like he's talking to someone with the same exact name as the person that was scamming Alan. So there's somewhat of a connection there. Um, but he did confirm that he is not talking to the same woman in the images as Douglas and Evan. I had a policeman come to my door the other day hmm. and uh, he came in I, and we sat down and he, he told me, uh, that this was a scam and that he had gotten that the reason he was at the house was because he got a call from a policeman in the Midwest someplace okay uh, asking him to come to visit me wow this is a huge web a yes huge web is a yes good word for it. yes a, a huge web is what they've got here yeah we flew Douglas out here so he can explain a little bit of how he's a part of this the story and so he came out here with us as well well like I said for the majority of it I'm the mule I'm the one that I'm the one that takes takes his stuff and, and moves it moves and it move yeah it to, I get it yeah and so it. money mule thinking about it and having had it done to me you know I'm glad to give back well, yeah I, I appreciate your honesty. Uh, I don't know uh, what else to say to you to express my appreciation and my uh, my thoughts. I'm sorry that you lost money too. It was nice being able to give Eugene some of his money back. You can tell Eugene had some trust in us and felt comfortable after that. And so it was really great to, to be able to deliver that to him in person. And at the same time, Trilogy delivering the $3,500 check back to Ken in Sacramento. So it was really great to tag team and collab with Trilogy on this. Massive story. Yes. The team. What time is it right now and where we are? It's O Dark 30 and we're uh, going to see the LAX. other half the team is going to Boston. Boston. We're returning, Shout out to Social Gap. Returning money to victims, which is the best feeling in the world. Something we've only gotten to do a handful of times. Yes. Um, excited to meet Evan, excited to connect more dots for the Allen case.
and most excited that we have an opportunity to return money to a victim. That is a very rare occurrence for us. Uh, it's hard as hell to do. We're gonna be giving Ken his money back today and it's not gonna make him whole, but I'm hoping it brings a smile and helps him recover just a little bit of what he's been through. So should we try to get Ken here sooner than later so we can get that done? I have talked to Ken this morning. He said he'll be here at noon. So here today, we're gonna give Ken back what he sent, his portion, which was 35. And I know that's not everything he lost, but right. that last payment that we were able to intercept before it was sent to the scammer. I know, that's what, you know, Ken said, so, I'm gonna here to drop off some money. No, Ken. Yeah, don't eat. do it, yeah. Hey, Ken. Hello. 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 How are you? <laughs> oh, my name is Art. Ken. My Ken. name is Ashton. Uh, Art and Ashton, huh? Art and Ashton, nice to meet you. And you already you met these handsome you. gentlemen. Yeah, I know him. We hunt down scammers. We try to get to the bottom of it. We try to figure out who's stealing money. And one thing leads to another, leads to another, and that's what led us to Evan. Well, all my money has gone to him. That's how they work. <laughs> Great, Evan! <laughs> this is it. So, um, except, except for the last one that went to Douglas. Yeah. So, and I understand that Douglas, you told he talked to Douglas. We met him. And yeah. he has the money that I had sent to him. Yeah. If you had to guess, if you don't mind sharing, how much they've taken from you. About 75. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Very similar as you. Yeah. This is such a unique situation because we've been in this business for almost a decade. And only few times, like we can count how many times we were able to recover money. With the money that been stolen from Alan, $350,000, from you guys, $79,000, $76,000. This crime organized People, they living a freaking life in Nigeria. Yeah, they make, freaking kings. They're making millions. Yeah, they flying private jets. Like they just, you know, they having vacations in Dubai every single weekend. But we had a very rare opportunity with this particular scam in when we found Douglas and we were able to talk to him. He's, he's, he's a great guy. He's got a huge heart. He's a character. Um, we were actually able to get him to understand the reality and it was shortly thereafter that he received two more payments. One was from a gentleman in Maryland or Massachusetts, and one was from you. And so we were able to talk to him, and thankfully he had not given that to the scammer yet. He's financially pretty screwed up over this. Um, he's sent hundreds of thousands of dollars through him. Uh, he, he says, I can't even afford my, to make the payments on my beat up truck right now. He's like, I'm having a really hard time. So it would have been very easy for him to want to take that money for himself and, and, and try to repair. But he's a good guy and he wants to do the right thing. And thankfully we were able to intervene and show him the truth before that happened. So thanks to Douglas and thanks to the work of Social Catfish and all of our collaborations with Trilogy and Media and this, and Evan, absolutely. And this is in no way going to repair everything that you lost. But we were able to stop that $3,500 and we have it for you. Okay. We have a check, cashier's check. This is the money back to you with your name on it. And that's just a little something to express our gratitude for you opening your eyes, coming to talk to us. I told Ashton this morning when we flew from Los Angeles, I was like, look, I don't know how much exactly money uh, Ken lost um, in this scam. And I was like, look, even if we can bring back, like if we can stop a dollar that did not end up being in scammer's hand, I was like, that's a victory. I know now how much you lost and I know it's not equivalent of these gigantic, but honestly, he gonna buy less jewelry for himself and he like maybe not gonna go to Dubai this weekend because the scammer. that yeah. this scammer. So this $3,500 check, it, you know, came back to you. And we could have mailed it to you, but yeah. it means more to us to be able to meet you and yeah. just okay. hand, it, hand it over to you. And um, so hopefully that helps a little well, bit. Yeah, yeah, every little bit helps, but you know, yeah. I appreciate it. I'm glad that we, yeah. in this critical drama, situ life drama experience situation, we still can, you know, laugh and I know a lot of tears been, you know, a lot of stress, a lot, a lot of stress, a lot of mm -hmm. stuff, but thank you for being brave and coming here and, mm -hmm. and, and coming to see him in the first place. Otherwise we may not have even found you. Mm -hmm. so, um, it's another piece to the puzzle and on to the next step. So Operation Evan Douglas, case closed. We were able to stop all the people that were sending money to the scammer. We got the scammer's voice on the phone. We got the scammer's IP address, and we know that it's in Nigeria. We got a couple hits on it. And we were able to get all the crypto wallets that had money sent to it. 
and over $1.3 million it was sent. And so we're getting this information over to law enforcement to work on getting an arrest in Nigeria. Thanks for watching. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. See you guys next week.